Hi, and welcome to the Ortsburg Area Free Public Library. Today I'm going to be reading Mildred, Maud, and Mr. Goose. Words and pictures by Fred Harsh. Mildred began every day feeling lonely. She would watch her friend Jack go off to work as the sun peeked over the roof of her stable. Jack was a good friend and loved Mildred very much, but like most people, he had many things to do, things to tinker with, to deal with, to buy, to sell, to fix, and to run after. There never seemed to be enough time left over for Mildred, so every day she felt very, very lonely, except on Sunday. Sunday was Mildred's favorite day. It was the day Jack would saddle her and they would lit travel together over the beautiful countryside. On Sunday, Mildred felt good all over and not the least bit lonely. But then, Monday would come and Jack was off again. Jack noticed that Mildred was beginning to look a little depressed. She spent a lot of time just looking out into space. She didn't finish her oats anymore and her hair was beginning to fall out. So after thinking about poor Mildred for a few days, Jack suddenly got a wonderful idea. That's it, he said. That night when Jack got home, he presented Mildred with a strange gift. It was a large crake with two fierce looking heads poking out of the top. Mildred, I understand how you've been feeling, how, how you've been feeling and I think it's, I have a cure for you, your loneliness right here in this crate. Jack opened the crate and two silly looking geese tumbled out. They will make wonderful companions for you while I'm gone during the day and they will be no trouble whatsoever. Mildred was very happy that Jack had brought her a gift but she wasn't sure, really sure about the two noisy geese. She snorted and pawed the ground and glared at both of them. But Jack just kept talking. On the way home, I even thought of some wonderful names for your new friend. The gray one will be called Maud, and because I can't think of a better name, we'll call the white one simply Mr. Goose. Jack fed Mildred and Mildred, Maud and Goose, and said goodnight, and then he disappeared into the house. Good grief, thought Mildred, snorting loudly. Jack has lost his mind. Mildred was sure of one thing right from the start. Those two silly birds don't make wonderful companions at all. Maud had a foul disposition most of the time. She scowled a lot and nipped at everything. Mr. Goose had no mind of his own. He just copied everything Maud did and was very loud about it. They followed Mildred from the water trowel to the stable, from the stable to the oat bucket, from the oat bucket to the shade tree. They were always squawking, hissing, and flapping. They were getting on Mildred's nerves. One day, many weeks late, later, everything went wrong for Mildred. First, she found goose feathers in her oat bucket. Then she discovered Mr. Goose swimming in her water trowel. Then the two of them rudely interrupted her afternoon nap, which had a loud argument between her hind legs. That does it, she snorted. Enough is enough. Mildred put her ears back and gave each goose a mighty whack with her nose, sending them tumbling across the yard. Mildred was quite beside herself. That's no way to treat a friend, she fumed. Horses just don't understand what it's like to be a goose. Poor Mildred's feathers were ruffled and her feelings were hurt. She decided then and there to run away from home and never ever come back. I'll teach that crabby horse a lesson or two. She'll be sorry now, she squawked. Naturally, Mr. Goose felt exactly the same way. So Maud wiggled under the fence and waddled off over the hills with Mr. Goose right behind. Good riddance, thought Mildred, as she watched them disappear out of sight. When Jack came home that night, he wondered why the geese didn't come to greet him as they always did. Hmm. Why, don't, won't worry, Mildred. They'll be back soon. Geese always come home when it gets dark. Mildred didn't mind at all. It was nice to have Jack all to herself and no more silly geese to get in the way of every move she made. The next day when the sun peeked over the saddle, Maud and Mr. Goose were nowhere to be seen. The farm was very, very quiet. 
Jack went off to do his usual things and Mildred was alone once again. And for the first time in a long time, she began to feel that old feeling. How strange, she thought. Could it be that those two silly birds were keeping me from feeling this way? Impossible. So she just stood and waited for Jack and stared off into space. But Jack had to work later than usual that day. And as the sun was going down and the moon was coming up, he still had not come home. Maud and, and Mr. Goose won't her, weren't home either. Mildred felt just awful. <laughs> Meanwhile, Maud and Mr. Goose, ha Mr. Goose hadn't gone very far. They spent the night under an apple tree at the other end of Jack's farm. And lonely night it was too. They were both very hungry and it was quite scary way at the end of the big field. Maud began to think that running away was not such a good idea after all. Maybe the rude horse is a better mood by now, she thought. If we start back right away, we can be home by dark. So off she went with Mr. Goose not far behind. From her stable on the last day of the last of the sun dipped behind the hill, Mildred heard two honks in the distance. She looked up surprised and saw a wonderful sight. Maud and Mr. Goose were coming home. Mildred never found out where they had been, nor did she care. She know, only knew that she didn't feel lonely anymore. So now when Jack saddles Mildred on Sunday and they travel over the beautiful countryside, Maud and Mildred, Maud follow, follows Mildred, and of course, Mr. Goose, Goose follows Maud. And that is the story of Mildred, Maud, and Mr. Goose. Friendship to the end.